Hello, my name is Dr. Jacqueline Wilson. I am Yakima. I'm originally from Kennewick, Washington, and I now live nearby in Pullman, Washington, where I teach at Washington State University as assistant professor of bassoon and music theory. I am a bassoonist and I do classical music and I'm excited to talk to you today. I was always inspired to pursue music exactly what that looked like kind of changed over time when i was younger in say junior high high school and i was doing band i really wanted to be a music educator and be a band director like i had experienced uh, because band in high school was really special for me it was kind of um, the consistency that i really needed in my life at that point you know in band the teachers always stay the same. You have that same uh, home base for all four years. And maybe I had a really great experience in English class, but at the end of the semester, that changed and I had a new experience. And so going somewhere where not only was I doing something that I enjoyed, but I had this home base of people, um, consistency, long-term relationship, I really thrived with that long-term mentoring and investment. So I knew that I wanted to pursue music as a music educator. And that's actually how I started playing the bassoon. My band director said, you know, look, I know there's not a lot of resources in your family. I know that you want to go to college. And I think that playing the bassoon could create some unique scholarship opportunities for you if you know, you're good at it. And I went great. I started playing the bassoon switched uh, in my junior year. And I had kind of forgotten about that part if you're good at it. <laughs> and band was like I said, it was kind of more of a social thing for me. Um, I would show up to band class and play my bassoon and I wouldn't really practice in between. And so when I went to college, it's a very different experience, you know, studying music as your major in college, they really treat that as professional development, professional training. And so there's a seriousness that comes along with it. And there were some really cool things. I got private lessons for the first time. I got to play in these amazing ensembles for the first time. I was away from home. I went about two hours away from home to Eastern Washington University. Um, but there were some things that I wasn't quite ready for as well. And so I wasn't able, because I hadn't been in a practice habit, right? to play the orchestra music and the orchestra director actually expressed concerns about my abilities and that was really devastating to me because like i said music had been this important thing uh, but then i was falling short and so i was kind of at this impasse moment and i decided that i wanted to change his mind about me and my playing i wanted to make the most of this opportunity in school and so i started practicing the bassoon three four five hours a day and the thing about not practicing at all and then practicing a lot, you get better really quickly. The progress comes really suddenly. And when that happens, I saw people respond to me differently. Uh, Jackie, you sound great. Wow, that's awesome. Keep going. And then as opposed to just music and being in a musical environment, being something that was really important and special to me, then the bassoon also became part of my sense of self, part of how I felt good, part of how I set goals and watched myself achieve them. And um, a sense of pride became associated with playing the bassoon. And that's when I switched my goal from being a high school music director and looked at my relationship with my private bassoon teacher, because in college, you have private lessons as part of your required curriculum. And I went, wow, all the stuff that I was looking for um, or that I appreciated in the, my band director relationship, that it's long-term, that it lasts your entire time at a particular educational institution, that it's someone who's investing in you long-term. 
all of those things are true about an applied or private instructor in college, um, but perhaps even more so, you're working one-on-one. -on -one. It's this apprenticeship type relationship and my life would get to be completely centered around the bassoon. And so I thought maybe I should pivot. It's still music, but I think I should get a performance degree and pursue a career as a professor at a university in higher education. And so that long-term relationship, mentorship, along with a love of performing and a love of collaborating with other people is really what inspired me to do music. Well, there are a lot of things that I like about performing uh, music. I'd say it's kind of twofold. There's kind of the internal or personal aspect of performing music that I really enjoy. Um, starting a piece that you're struggling with or starting a piece that you look at it and go, there is no way I'm ever going to be able to perform that. I have no idea how to even begin. And then to watch yourself again, just slowly kind of start to set small goals and reach them. And the sense of accomplishment that comes along with learning a piece or presenting a recital, doing a concerto, all of those type of things. It's a constant way to challenge myself. It's a way to grow. It's a way to um, be uh, continually evolving in my career. Being a performer, there's not much of an opportunity to be you know, stagnant. As long as I have that next performance, that next thing, it's an opportunity to grow, which is really important to me. And one thing that I love about performing music, but then you have the other side. And this is something that I'm ever trying to emphasize more as an artist, because what we do is so vulnerable and it's so personal. We can often make it like all about ourselves right and really it should be about the audience and so the relationship forging a relationship with your audience inviting them into your interpretation speaking to them about the piece that they're about to hear what it means what you're trying to say giving them opportunities to listen and respond um that is something that I really love and taking myself out of it and trying to be in service to my audience is um, a really beautiful communal aspect of performing music. Because I emphasize and collaborate with Native composers, it's also an opportunity to teach my audience about myself. It's an opportunity to teach them about other artists that I admire. It's an opportunity to tell stories, to change narratives, and to change perspectives. And so in that way, we can, as performers, really use music as a tool to our advantage to start the conversations that are important to us. And in that way, uh, you know, performing is so vital to the world. I have recently uh, dug into composition. I would not call myself a composer, but I have in the spirit of um, creating relationships, showing myself to my audience. I have recently put pen to paper and started creating works for the bassoon on the concert hall stage. And those have been really well received. And so it's even more of a indication to me that making art that is personal, that is human, presents opportunities for connections with other people, which is, um, beautiful and just such a motivation to keep performing even when it's hard even when you deal with nerves that benefit um, outside of yourself is such an important thing to prioritize some of my bigger musical accomplishments uh let me think probably the biggest one that comes to mind is getting my doctorate and finishing my education um, I'm a first generation college student. I was the first in my family to go to school. And when I decided to switch to bassoon performance and pursue higher education as a career, 
I knew that I needed what's called a terminal degree or a doctorate. So either a PhD or when you're a performer, the degree is typically a DMA, Doctorate of Musical Arts. So I knew I'd need to finish college, go on to a master's degree, and then ultimately go on to a doctorate. And that seemed um, really like a long path to get to my dream, you know, um, perhaps a little bit longer than some other options that I could have pursued, but it was really important to me. It was really special. And I also know that not everyone gets the opportunity to have so much education, right? And to learn at the places that I learned. And so the objective just seemed so big <laughs> and that I stuck with it and that I continued pursuing it. I finished my undergraduate at Eastern Washington University and then I did my master's at Boston University with Matthew Ruggiero, a member of the Boston Symphony Orchestra. And that was such a positive experience. It's such a um, orchestrally focused city and school and so to get to play huge works like Mahler symphonies uh I got to play in symphony hall where the Boston Symphony Orchestra plays that was so cool and then I did my doctorate at the University of Iowa and this was probably one of the best experiences of my whole life um my teacher there Benjamin Quilio was the epitome of mentorship. He really was such an example of that long-term investment that I've been talking about of um, cultivating a young artist and ushering them into professional success. And I don't think that if I had not studied with him, I would have found the success and been able to achieve my dream. He was really um, important to me in terms of that guidance. And so I didn't do it alone. Uh, I had those mentors along the way helping me, um, but that I made it to the end, that I didn't give up on my dream and that I kept going and and that no matter what happens, you know, my, my career and my life and uh, everything in the future, I don't know what it holds and it could bring anything, but no matter what, I have these degrees and that those can't be taken away from me. So the last thing that I want to do is share a performance of mine with you. I mentioned earlier that I recently started dabbling in composing and I recently completed a work for solo bassoons. This is unaccompanied bassoon and it's inspired by powwow so the music that you're gonna hear it doesn't sound like powwow song but what i did was i took characteristic parts of the powwow or of each dance style and i used that as a inspiration or a point of departure so for fancy shawl you're you'll hear lots of leaping fast figures um for grand entry you'll hear um kind of the steadiness of the drum and then the um voices crying out and those are two things that are kind of opposing as opposed to together like we might hear them um so it, it's just a point of departure for inspiration uh but i'm really proud of it people are excited about it i've had six performances already thus far and it was just released this fall so um this is my interpretation and performance of my work dance suite for solo bassoon i hope you enjoy Oh. Mm -hmm. 